Hope all of you out there have had a fantastic weekend as we wrap things up on Sunday. You're watching the 49ers Report by Chat Sports. I'm Chase Sr. Thank you so much for joining us on today's show. Going to take a look at some top edge rushers that the Niners can still sign in NFL free agency following the NFL draft. Before we take a look at some of those intriguing options, though, because there are good players that could help Nick Bosa still out there without a team for 2023, make sure you subscribe to the show. Year-round content on the San Francisco. Francisco 49ers and we're closing in on another milestone here on the show of 81,000 subscribers. We're currently locked in at 80,950. Can we get to the Terrell Owens number with this show? I believe that we can. If you want to stay informed in the know and entertained on all things Niners year round, we have you covered here on the channel. As for the 49ers sack leaders in 2022, this is why I have said I think Nick Bosa could use a lot of help. He had 18 and a half sacks last year, but the next best, Samson Ebucom, who this is somewhat of a surprise, made the most money among all edge rushers in free agency up to this point. He had five sacks. Charles Amenehu who had four and a half. Drake Jackson going into a huge and pivotal year two, he had three, and he got DNP'd in a couple of games last year. And then Jordan Willis, also not on this team, with two sacks. So Willis gone, Amenihu gone, Samson Ebucom gone, Nick Bosa didn't have a sack the final month of the season combined in the playoffs and the regular season, he was getting a little bit tired. So while San Francisco did bring in a Javon Hargrave to help along that defensive front, one of the best best pass rushing defensive tackles in the game as last year he registered 11 sacks for the Philadelphia Eagles last year to go along 16 quarterback hits. That's at defensive tackle. That's not at edge rusher. And I think that Drake Jackson can become a really solid player in this league, but I'd rather see the Niners bring in a veteran to team up with Drake Jackson because the more depth, the better. Now, I want to begin by talking about a player who we haven't really talked about a lot here on the show at that defensive end spot. That is Marcus Golden. Name sounds familiar because He's had some good years with the Arizona Cardinals, been in the league for a really long time. In 2022, the production, of course, dipped from what was a very good 2021 when he had 11 sacks. Now, it seems as though he'll have a big year, like 2019 with 10 sacks, dip in production the following year, four and a half in 2020. In 2021, it goes up to 11 sacks, but he's very active, right? And you can see the numbers there, 11 sacks, 10 tackles for loss, 48 tackles, 19 quarterback hits. And even though in 2022, he didn't have crazy sack numbers by any means, he did still have 20 quarterback hits, 7 tackles for loss, and 48 tackles, so he was a pretty active player. Now, you know my favorite player who's still available is Yannick Ngakwe. I wasn't sure that after the Niners restructured the contract for Christian McCaffrey to clear up that space, that that signaled that the Niners were going to be making a move at edge rusher, if that is the case. And Gakwe is still out there. Every year that he's been in the NFL, he's had at least eight sacks. Against the run, not a great player. But you're going to be going up against some teams here in 2023 that are going to air the football out a lot. And we just got done talking about that dip in sack production team-wise after Nick Bosa. You're not going to have a dip there. When Yannick Ngakwe is on your team, this guy steadily gets after the opposing quarterback. He's good for at least eight sacks every single year. And even though he's not good against the run, this guy brings a very important element to your defense. What is that? Pressuring the opposing quarterback. And sometimes that's how you win Super Bowls. So two guys down. Who would you rather have? Yannick Ngakwe type YN, Marcus Golden type MG down in the comment section. Sound off with what you think down below. You know, for me, I'm going Yannick Ngakwe. Younger player who's still only like 27 years old, and the production has certainly been there. As for Justin Houston, the production has been there for a really long time. This guy, one of the ba best sack artists in the history of the NFL. And he continues to be a guy who defies father time, seemingly. With 2022, you look at the stats, he had nine and a half sacks for the Baltimore Ravens last year. And I thought that on a defense that does prioritize getting after the quarterback, they've always had that as a massive, massive area of focus on that team. Justin Houston got significant snaps. 
but the snap load was actually lower than in previous seasons, yet he's still able to tally nine and a half sacks, right? In 2021, solid production there, four and a half sacks. Year before that, eight. Year before that, in 2019, 11 sacks. Houston is a guy who's a little bit older, of course. He's been in the league for a really long time, but you can get him on the cheap. And again, we're talking about players who just give you more depth and give you abilities to conserve Nick Bosa to a certain degree, but also alter and impact games. And for Justin Houston, 39th all-time in the NFL history books with sacks, 111 and a half throughout his career. Great years with the Indianapolis Colts, the Kansas City Chiefs. Last year with the Baltimore Ravens, he continues to play very, very good football. Lastly, let's talk about Leonard Floyd here. Like Marcus Golden, NFC West familiarity, Leonard Floyd, NFC West familiarity. Last three years with the Los Angeles Rams, the production has been very, very solid, and this sack production is good. Now, I've said this a couple of times. Like He's a little bit too slight to be the go-to number one defensive end for a team where you're just counting on him solely to sack the quarterback. But when he's playing alongside a talented defensive front, stand-up edge rusher, guy who can occasionally put his hands in the dirt, you put him alongside Nick Bosa, you put him alongside Javon Hargrave, both of those players tally double-digit sacks, then he can have a season like he has over the last couple of years with the Los Angeles Rams, in which he's gone 11-10-9 and over the last three years with the rival Los Angeles Rams. So... Leonard Floyd, interesting player. There are, of course, reasons for why these players are still available on the free agency market. But this is a team in San Francisco that is a Super Bowl-ready roster. And these guys can affect and impact your team right away. So which edge rusher do you want, this, want the Niners to sign? We went through four guys on today's show. All of them offer a little bit of something to your football team and your front line. Of course, all of them a little bit different. Uh, difference in terms of their age as well. Let us know what you're thinking. If you want to interact with me on social media, at Chase underscore Senior, you can do that as well. Been hopping in the NBA bag of late, doing a lot of NBA playoffs watch parties, including some on our Golden State Warriors channel. If you're a big NBA fan and you like the dubs, catch us on Monday night for Warriors-Lakers Game 4, pivotal game in that series with the Lakers up 2-1. This is the 49ers Report. I'm Chase Senior. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time on the show.